G'day, Michael here. I've had some trouble with BTRFS file systems in the past and I couldn't quite figure out what the cause was and now the penny has dropped. So I thought I'd make this video uh, to cover the pitfalls of the BTRFS file system while it's fairly, fairly fresh in my head. This happened to me yesterday and what I was doing basically is um, preparing for a Mac OS installation on Linux video and it took me a while to figure out what was going on. I mean I spent probably four or five hours having trouble and then all of a sudden the penny dropped what's actually happening. Now um, it was quite simple really. I was using an NVMe drive. Right now I'm running on a backup because I'm pretty good with my backups and you can see here I'm using um, my backup drive home directory. Um, that's where my my location is. I'll just go ls-la home and you can see that my home directory which is home Michael has been redirected to storage backup local Michael so my backup procedures have saved my butt but basically I had an NVMe drive set up as my home partition and I managed to screw it up royally um, with using BTRFS file system in a bad way and it's not strictly the file systems error it's actually a combination of problems that add up so it's going to take me a while to sort of unwrap it but anyhow let, let me begin uh, the first thing I did was simply copying a file let's just I'll actually do a duplication of this here now BTRFS file system is is a file system that is its principle is copy on write. So it looks like the word cow, but copy on write. Now what that means is, let's say I want to copy, this is a very large file that I used on the previous Mac OS install. Let's go, let's go, just copy. Let's make a new folder. Uh, let's call it tester. And go paste. Boom. It's instantly copied across. So you think, wow, that's fantastic. The, the BTRFS has saved me all that time. But you've got to remember what it actually does, is the copy on write, the way BTRFS saves so much disk space and also a lot of that massive copying time, that's a, like a nearly a 10 gigabyte file. There's no way that fight, that machine is finished at that job. Let me get a, um, a monitor to show much, how much work it's doing. So D, stat, actually I might just check. Let's be okay. Uh, MD0 is important. Okay. So if I go D stat hyphen capital D, that's the device we're picking. And I'm using a, in, not an NVMe drive, I'm using a rated pair of good old fashioned metal platens spinning, spinning rust. MD0. And it's giving me pretty high performance and pretty good storage space, but let's just have a look at that. You can see that's doing nothing. So let's go back. I'll put that down here where you can see it sort of frittering past. This is reading and writing of the disk. So this column here is read, that column's write. And every time it does a page full, it redoes these headers. Okay, so if I go, if I delete that, it's done a couple of kilobytes. Now I'm going to paste it back in there again. And it's done 11 megabytes of write. But that's a 6 gigabyte file. So that has saved me so much time by copying that way. Okay, but now we're going to look at what kind of file that actually is. Now it's a VMware uh, virtual disk. Now, the moment I go to use that in my um, virtual machine, we start having to open that file up and the virtual machine drive is in fact not the size that it is. That's nominally a 100 gigabyte drive, but the file system itself, let's just see what the properties are. It's normally 8.9 gigabytes. Right. And what happens is the virtual machine expands that out as you add more and more files to that um, virtual drive. So it's not physically 
100 gigabytes, it's physically 8.9 gigabytes, but as we add data to it within the virtual machine, it grows. Okay, so there's complexity number two. So I've got this copy and write file system, and we've got this uh, virtual dr drive or virtual disk image that is also not its real size. So as we go and add files to it, that'd be okay. If it's just added to the end, it would be quite simple for BTRFS to work with that. But then when I, I got that um, system running, like ran the virtual machine, and chose to do updates, it has to go through, you know, there's some files early on the disk where it has to, uh, you know, maybe upload a bootloader or, you know, some kernel thing which has to be replaced early on in the drive. And then it might be adding files sort of halfway through the drive and then modify a file towards the end of the drive and then expand a bit on the end. So when it's trying to write, the copy on write business means it's trying to write the beginning of an 8.9 gigabyte drive and then it's trying to write in the middle and the end and all sorts of bits and pieces all over the place. But that file doesn't, those parts of that file don't exist. So it's got to create it as it's writing to it. So the machine is so busy kind of expanding out that drive and it doesn't do it in a, like, it's not like unzipping a file where it does it in a linear fashion. It obviously would have, you know, whatever size blocks is its minimum block size. It has to write the whole block either side of that part that it's modifying. So it's creating a file and having to expand it out. And presumably if, if you had it peppered enough with files, it's got to create about 8.9 gigabytes of files to let it write maybe only a few megabytes of data, but sprinkle through the drive. And so it's quite complex, and it might have been asked to write towards the end of the file first before it writes at the beginning. So as it's kind of then, move this out the road. Uh, so as it's writing the virtual file, let's go to the, um, hoping I'm making sense here, uh, virtual machines, where are you? There we go. So the one in play is this guy. So I'm uh, setting up Mojave on um, a virtual box, and this is the arrangement that I've set up. But anyhow, uh, as it's creating the the drive, because it's writing little parts to it, it's doing 8.9 gigabytes of work, but in a fragmented way. And uh, so the next complexity I had was, it looked like I had enough space on that drive. But because the the virtual drives aren't actually their full size on the disk. It's not really 100 gigabytes, it's 8.9 gigabytes, but being copied through BTRFS, it's only like apparently about 11 megabytes um, until you start working on it. It's got to expand out and expand out and expand out and write all over the place. And I was doing a fair bit, I had this machine running about four or five different virtual machines doing much the same task as I was experimenting different processes to try and make a very simple method for you know you YouTube video you video viewers so that it would be easy for you to do the job but meanwhile I'm doing the hard work here and the thing that was doing the heavy lifting was this computer and with multiple virtual drives being expanded out it filled up the NVMe drive and because the virtual machine doesn't really understand that it's working in a virtual machine environment. It can't make sense of the fact that this drive, which is normally a finite thing, a physical hard disk is a certain size, it can't make sense of the fact that it can't write beyond a certain line. So the file system underneath it was going, no, you can't have any more space, um, but it was still attempting to expand it out. And so BTRFS was getting itself in a quite tangled up knot dealing with these write requests and trying to expand out the files which it could no longer do. And so what I was doing in the background is very vigorously as I noticed the drive was filling I was deleting files left right and center videos and things to try and get some space on the drive and apparently I wasn't quite quick enough and so I ended up with all sorts of corruption on the drive so okay I thought well 
maybe what I can do is repair it, you know, like a FSCK. So I'll just do that. What did I? Another terminal. Now, right, so. Here we go. They recommend not to do this because you can actually make matters worse trying to repair a, a BTRFS file system. So it gives you 10 seconds to reject the idea. I'm going to let it run. And you can see the type of error I get. So the basic file system is okay. But these errors here cannot be fixed. Right, so if I don't do the repair, so it just gives me a report of the problems. And there's basically nothing I can do to repair the drive because the problem is so complex, it could be deleting the wrong branching of the trees. Um, so they basically don't do it which is the data protection thing. I've actually kept the data. I haven't lost data, but I've got it messed up. What was writing has been messed up. But the data that's other than those particular files in play are still okay. And I was able to copy the bulk of that out onto my backup to give me a, a current running system, barring those virtual machines. But I can't repair the drive, so what I'm going to be doing is reformatting it. Okay, so any second now we'll see a flood of error messages. I'll just actually enlarge that a bit. Here we go. We've got a flood of error messages there. It just says errors found. But there's a, a freaking lot of errors. I just um, There's a lot of errors. I don't know how many there are. But I'd say hundreds. Because even the 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 history in the terminal is, is you know, not enough to show it all. So there'd be hundreds and hundreds of errors. Could possibly be thousands of errors. So I'm unable to overcome those errors. So basically, I don't want to keep using that file system until I get this resolved. Which to me means I'm going to reformat that drive. So the BTRFS hasn't lost the files, but it's made a mess of it. And it's meant that I've had to run on backups while I strip that file system out. Now, what solutions do we have at hand? Well, I think there are two. If I were to copy those virtual drives from another physical drive, then it would have written the whole file new to start with. And then you wouldn't have had the problem of it having the compound uh, process of expanding the drive, copying on write, and then branching um, multiple different what do they call it? The, the trees. It doesn't have to um, manage all the different trees each. You know, I don't know what the, the smallest um, block is that they call uh, that they manage with BTRFS, but I imagine it's something like an inode or a, a, maybe it's just called a block. I don't know. Anyway, not understanding the, the nitty gritty of BTRFS, but just the concept that it's copying on write. Um, I can see how much trouble that causes to be branching out from the original file, duplicating to the second file in bits and pieces as it's being written to. Yeah, it's quite a complicated problem. Okay, so one solution I can see is if we keep with the BTRFS, copying from another drive to that location would mean that the file gets created in full new. Um, another option would be to use a different file system. I kind of like BTRFS file system, so I'm going to stick with it. Um, but I just have to remember, if I'm doing that kind of thing, it's worthwhile copying that kind of thing by duplicating it onto another drive and bringing it over. So it's definitely a full file copy, rather than a branch. And um, what I love about BTRFS is the instant snapshot capacity. So you can take a snapshot of the drive, regardless of what it's doing at that point in time, and there you go, you've got a backup of that, the drive in that state. 
unfortunately I didn't do that on that drive so I had the old-fashioned type of backup where it's just copied to another drive which nonetheless is working fine as you can see my machine's working fine um, yeah so I hope that makes sense uh, feel free to ask any questions about this or if you've had similar problems maybe make it make a point in the comments below yeah so I guess that's it feel free to like share subscribe ask a question leave a comment bye for now